Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we answer the question we asked a couple of uh, videos ago. Can you turn a stout or an imperial stout into a whiskey? Now this is part of the beer to whiskey series we are doing on the channel. So if you like this kind of content, remember to hit that subscribe button down in the corner there. Uh, leave a comment, leave a like and yeah, that's how we know you like this kind of content. But before we get into tasting the difference between the beer we made as well as the whiskey, I just would like to thank everybody for the kind words that I got over on the community page when I posted there that we didn't have power for the last week. So uh, yeah, thank you very much everyone. We had our power come back on Monday morning, very early on Monday morning, around about 2 in the morning. So we've been having stable power for the whole day thus far. So we decided to film the video. We also did the run of the whiskey in front of us. We did a standard whiskey run. Now if you want to know more about how I run my whiskies, I'll put a link to a rest or to a video up here where I did a explanation on how I run my whiskies to ensure that I stay within that ballpark between 60 and 80 percent to ensure that I get a good balance of flavors. I also as always when I run my whiskies is I allowed one jar of tails to run and then I used my technique to compress the tails to get a little bit more of the flavors out of the whiskey and uh, yeah and then I cut my run and I don't collect any more tails so I did the same thing yeah we took the run off at around about 75 percent all the way through the run um, because the first jar or the first couple of drips that I took off were quite strong with the roasted flavors so that kafara uh, malt was quite prominent so i didn't want too much of that malt smoke pulling through into the final product dialed up on the abv a little bit and took it off quite slightly higher than i normally do but yeah took it off at 75 percent the second jar i took it down again to see if i can find those roasted flavors again and maybe they got muted again picked them up here in jar two so i took that off at 60 percent Jar 3 once again bumped the ABV up to 75%, Jar 4 took off at 75%, Jar 5 over here we took off at 55% and then we started getting some nice heavy tails flavors coming in and the moment I tasted that transition between where the tails got really bad I turned the still back into full reflux and then took it off at 72% when I compressed my tails and the last jar came off nice and sweet. Now that's on the cuts. What we're going to do is we're going to blend all of this back together again. See how much of the tails and how much of the compressed tails we're going to add to the final product. And then we'll do the final tasting. But before we get to that, let's talk about how we got the beer to the point where we have it now. It's all finished in the bottle. It has been cold crashing for a couple of days now. I think it's about... Uh, eight days spent in the fridge it clarified out nicely there's no infection on the top of the bottle the beer recipe went quite well we have a little bit of sediment filming at the bottom from uh, the final carbonation the yeast dropping out sorry before i jump ahead of myself how we got to this point here is first of all we transferred the beer from primary to secondary ferment now the reason why we do that is after the beer has fermented uh, to the final gravity that we wanted for this beer, it was a 1.071. Once we reach that final gravity, what we do is we leave the beer for another two, maybe three days. I left mine for three days. I actually wanted to only do it for two, but ended up being three days to allow some of the yeast and the sediment to drop out. Once that occurs, what I do then is I transfer it into a secondary ferment. We call it secondary ferment, but no fermentation happens there. So what we can actually call it is secondary flocculation. So that is a, where we allow all the sediment and everything that is suspended within that wash to drop out completely to the bottom and get a nice clean beer. After we left it in the secondary fermentation uh, and everything dropped out quite nicely what we did then is we transferred it over into our bottling bucket but before we added all any liquid into the bottling bucket 
we prepared our carbonation sugars. Now I use dextrose, you'll see on the screen now, I used 120 grams of dextrose that I added to nice boiling water. I allowed the water to boil for around about 20 minutes just to make sure that anything that is in that water or in the sugar gets denurtured and no buggies can get into my beer. Because remember, when brewing beer, the infection or the chance of an infection is always around. So make sure everything is nice and clean before it goes in. And that's why we boil our priming sugars. Now, allow that priming sugar mixture to cool down to room temperature, having it covered so nothing can get in there. I took my bottling bucket, sanitized it with first with some uh, bleach, rinsed it out quite nicely and then sprayed it with some no rinse sanitizer and I did exactly the same with all the hoses and tubes that I used to do the transfer and all that. Transferred it into the, sec uh, into the bottling bucket. Why put the priming sugars in first and not afterwards? Because that nice circular motion as the stuff is draining into the bucket will get everything nice and uniformly mixed and you don't have to do it manually and might just infect it with something that you don't want. So yeah, allow that gravity to mix everything nice and together. Once we did that, we lifted the bottle bucket up top. We then took our sanitized bottles. As you see on the screen, we uh, washed all the bottles, sanitized them, and then I put some no rinse sanitizer in the bottle, the bottom of each of the bottles, closed the lids up. And just before I added the beer in, I gave it a nice shake up and drained all the sanitizing liquid straight over to our bottling station where we took our bottling wand, filled our beers and yes, a whole lot of words, but we ended up with a bunch of beers and a bunch of bottles. We left those to self carbonate for three days, then transferred the beers that we want to drink into the fridge, allowing them to cold crash. Now a minimum of two days is required for your beer to cold crash. The longer it stays in the fridge, the better. Cool. And now we are at this stage. And I'm very excited to do a bearded and bored moment. So with any bit of luck, we should have a nice pop and no boiling over. So yeah, let's see what happens. those that are wondering we ran that whiskey we ended up with a final product 1.2 liters at 70 percent we're now going to proof that down to 55 percent let it rest for a tiny bit and allow some of those flavors just to get back in or to melt back together before we do the final tasting while we wait for that to happen what we're going to do quickly is taste the beer and then we'll do the side by side between the whiskey and the beer yeah, let's just quickly proof this down, get it into another jar, and then we'll get into the tasting. While that whiskey is just amalgamating back together, let's just quickly give this beer a nice look over. Now, as you saw me pouring it nice and dramatically, we had a good amount of head forming. The head is actually quite persistent on it. It is not just going away real quick. It has a nice and light and foamy head so yeah as for the color it's a nice dark almost opaque dark beer if you hold it up against the light you can see that nice golden brown colors coming through on the nose it is very fruity it has a good amount of citrus coming from that northern brewers uh, hops that we used and then for that roasted uh, the roasted barley that's in there that comes through quite nicely. The kafara malt also adds a ton of coffee notes to it. Give it a quick taste and see what we think. Okay, now me being a stout lover, this is a very good clean stout. Has nice starting flavors, nice bitter coffee flavors when it starts off. Then goes into that nice, sweet, almost chocolatey flavors. 
and then ends up with that nice bitter bite on the back of your tongue from the hops nice full body beer the the grain plays nicely the final abv was around 6.2 percent so yeah a good quality beer we'll definitely be enjoying the rest of these bottles of stout during the winter remember if you want to get your hands on this recipe i'll put a link down in the description where you can buy the complete recipe kit from prohibition home brewers so the link will be down in the description where you can pick up this imperial stuff let's move over to the whiskey so the question i'm asking here is not whether or not i can taste everything that i've tasted in the beer in the whiskey now i know there's a lot of guys on the previous video with their comments coming through saying that you know the the, the experiment is mute because uh, it's a totally different process and so on and so forth yeah and I agree with that. Yes, the, the process of making a whiskey and the process of making a beer is completely different. The question here is not whether or not you can taste the grains, the grain flavors and all the other stuff that you taste in the beer. It's whether or not a Imperial Stout recipe, that recipe that I used, makes a good whiskey. Because there's a ton of different recipes for beers out there, but there's not a lot of whiskey recipes that have been tried and tested. This is going to be compared on my palate whether the stout makes a whiskey that I want to replicate again. If you want to make this whiskey at home, you can just grab that recipe that I'll put down in the description and you can go make a whiskey like this at home using ingredients that you can pick up at your local brew shop. So that's the idea of the series. So let's get into the tasting. Now I'm going to start off with the whiskey first. As I was proofing this down and adding those jars in, the immediate thing that came to mind was a nice dark roasted coffee flavor that came off of the product. And just to clarify one thing once again, the distiller's beer that we used to make the whiskey was not hopped. We did not use the hops that were sent with the recipe in the distiller's beer. We only hopped the beer that we are now drinking over here so the distiller's beer was never hopped quickly get a immediate nose on this yeah so as i said dark coffee dark chocolate you get that nice roasted smell to it when i say roast i more i mean more like toast like toasting bread um, when you put it into a toaster you get that initial smell of the bread warming up that nice and roasty kind of smells coming off of that yeah, on the nose, it is a very complex whiskey or a complex white dog. And I'm very interested to see what Wood's going to do to this. Not trying to be funny, but that's one of the best white dogs I've ever tasted. It is sweet when it hits your tongue. It transitions into a little bit of a bitter spell. And then it ends up with that retro nasal coming back through with that roasted toasty smells coming through and a burst of sweetness yeah that i've never tasted in another whiskey so i don't know if it's the roasted grains that allowed us to get to that stout color or yeah i don't know but whatever is in that recipe just worked for this whiskey actually a very good whiskey actually drinkable exactly like it is with no changes so the question is uh will i be making more of this absolutely 100 percent. this will probably become a yearly make for myself and maybe one day even scale up to getting this into a barrel because i think this deserves a proper aging in a nice little barrel so yeah if you guys want me to see scale up this kind of recipe to a barrel put it down in the comments see what we can do about maybe getting a barrel and enough of this grain to scale it up so after smelling the whiskey and now going back to the beer that roasted grains come out a lot more the beer smells a lot more bitter yeah I'm going to do something cheap. Yeah, 
Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, oof, I don't know how he did that, but the moment I added that whiskey into the beer, it just became a bitter bomb. But also, it stripped away all the other flavors. It just became bitter and not nice at all. So, yeah, I was hoping it might add another level of sweetness to it. But yeah, it just went bitter. Maybe it was the first taste. Let's try it again. Yeah. Um, it starts off a lot thinner. With almost no flavor. And then it just hits you like, I don't know, if you lick a... Uh, your hand after putting sanitizer or something on your hand that bitter smell it just yeah oh. don't know how much of that uh, ends up in the final edit but yeah don't put the whiskey into your beer Ooh, it does not work so yeah don't do that so back to the whiskey very good beer awesome whiskey together that's a good but yeah um, the whiskey itself, I have to say, I'm very impressed. I'm glad about the amount of tails that I let come through. Because in the tails, you had that nice, earthy, savory sweetness coming back into it. And, uh, yeah, just ended up with a really good whiskey. Now, if you stuck around this far, thank you very much. And if you like this kind of content, remember to hit that subscribe button down in the corner here, that little red logo hit that to subscribe to the channel ring the bell then you'll be notified of any new content that will be uploaded also if you don't mind give us a thumbs up leave a comment down below it does help a lot and i like to see what you guys think about the content we are creating over on the channel so yeah as always have a lack of day